Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I was going to post an advice video today but I kind of wanted to film something a bit more relaxed and a bit more chill especially after last video and the endless amount of overwhelm I've been feeling that doesn't stop because everything keeps escalating but um yeah so we're not going to do an advice video I'm going to pull up that there we go today we're gonna do a little bit of a get ready with me I'm not going anywhere but just because there's a global pandemic and human rights protest doesn't mean you can't look fabulous so that's what we're going to do we're just gonna do some makeup have a chat be chill and just yeah that's what we're doing if you don't like it you can click off and today I want to talk about singing because singing is nice singing is something that we can all get behind so we're going to talk about singing specifically kind of singer's block and then we're probably going to meander from there let's be honest so yeah that's what we're talking about i hope you enjoy <laughs> let's let's put on some makeup on my face so i look a bit less shiny oh no i didn't want to start with primer i wanted to start with my lips because they are crusty af uh yes so this idea it wasn't kind of inspired it was inspired by a conversation that I had with a friend really recently and they said that they had seen my 100 days of practice posts on Instagram and they'd found it really inspiring because they hadn't sung properly in a really long time and I was like yeah I've had that as well and I thought that would be an interesting thing to talk about because I don't think people talk about the struggles, well struggles in general, I just think it's getting better now particularly when it comes to specific mental health but I think also in terms of people having difficulty with their creativity especially singing or music I don't think our community talks about it that much and I, it's something that everyone goes through everyone at some point in their singing lives in their lives as a singer has periods where they don't sing or they can't sing so i kind of wanted to talk about it if you follow my 100 days of practice on instagram you'll probably know that i've discussed this a little bit on there until about two weeks ago i hadn't sung properly since the 16th of march when I and some of my colleagues went into lockdown. I went into work on Monday the 16th and we were told, yeah, shows aren't happening, go home. And since then, I was pretty much in lockdown because then a week later, the country was like, hey, don't go out. And that was 13 weeks ago. So I hadn't sung properly since then. That's also why I started the 100 days of practice challenge around that time, but I hadn't been including singing in that really. I hadn't done any singing practice. I hadn't practiced any scales or any technique, anything like that. Tangent, I don't know what shade I want. I've got a big mirror, so you'll be able to see my face this time. I think I'm kind of a mix because I've caught the sun, but not loads. I'm gonna have to mix it on my hand. It's difficult times. So on day 70 of 100 days of practice, the day I'm filming this, I'm on day 90, so I'm nearly done. I was like, I need to get back on singing because I haven't sung in like two and a half months and it wasn't easy it was it was really difficult i mean for starters obviously not singing properly for over two months my voice was fecked <laughs> like my top break really really needed some work it's fine now it only took me a week and i was like yes but obviously when i first started back again my my larynx was like what are you demanding of us why are you doing this it was kind of upsetting for me i'm not i'm not going to lie wanting to sing like singing scales that i used to do every single day with no problems it was just like yeah cool singing songs that i know how to sing and then all of a sudden getting to my break and nothing coming out or singing songs that i know how to sing and just knowing that i wasn't singing them well it's difficult like it made me up it made me upset even though intellectually i knew why i i knew it was like okay if i was a runner and i hadn't run for two months you know my next 10k may not even be 10k i knew that intellectually but it still i really had to had to push through and push myself at the same time as being kind i've had friends who've gone through problems with their voice and it can be really distressing for us especially as a singer whether that's a professional singer or you're just someone who sings all the time it becomes a way you define yourself and not being able to do it especially because it's your it's your body as well it's your voice i think 
the idea of our voices, whether you're a singer or not, but even more so when you're a singer, it has a lot of strong connotations for us. And not being able to use it, it not working, can be can be really distressing. In a, in a different way to if you're an instrumentalist. I mean, I can't speak for if, if something were to happen to like your hands or something and you're an instrumentalist and you physically cannot play your instrument, I guess it would be a similar thing but you can hide behind your instrument, you know? I've heard instrumentalists say this, they like playing their instrument because they feel like that's what, that's what you're expressing through, right? It's something they can kind of hide behind. But the thought of just getting up in front of an audience, sorry, I'm finding my blusher. The idea of getting in front of an audience with nothing and singing a song is absolutely terrifying to some, to some instrumentalists. In the same way that for actors and performers, the material you're performing, the text, the character that you're portraying is kind of a barrier from showing your true self. The thing that terrifies me in the same vein it would be being a stand-up comedian because you're just there, it's just you. That That's terrifying to me. I don't know why anyone would do it. <laughs> Props if you do. And it's something that I've noticed in, in my 100 days of practice even when I first did it last year in, tw in 2019, I noticed I'm far more comfortable when it comes to posting videos and clips on the internet, posting me playing the ukulele, than I am with posting me singing. I make myself do it because I need to just build a bridge and get over it, but I do not enjoy posting myself singing on the internet. I find it terrifying. I feel the opposite for live performance. If someone was like, gun to your head, get in front of an audience and perform something, 100% I would sing. 100%. And I think that's because with the internet, once it's up there, it never really goes away. I've been singing since I was six years old. I've been singing in front of audiences since I was six. I've been playing ukulele since January 2019. So it, it seems weird that I don't like posting myself singing online. But I think that's because, because it can't go away, whatever you put up can be scrutinised by absolutely anyone. With ukulele, I'm, I don't pretend that I'm good. In the grand scheme of things, I'm bad. I can't play bar chords and I only know two finger picking patterns. I'm not a good ukulele player, but I'm not pretending to be. I don't claim to be. So if someone were to stumble across me doing a really bad cover of a song on ukulele and was like, wow, that's rubbish. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, pre it's pretty rubbish. Well done, have a cookie. But if someone were to say you're a terrible singer, even though intellectually I know I'm not because I would not be working in this industry. <laughs> I wouldn't have survived five years in this industry if I was bad. That would feel worse and I'd, you know, I don't know, I guess it would ignite some kind of imposter syndrome complex that's probably deep in my soul along with my low self-esteem, I feel more vulnerable putting up videos of me singing. But that's why I make myself do it from time to time because I just need to get over that. In live performance, I have God knows how many hours of live performance practice with singing like since I was six years old. So in that time, like bad things have happened. I've I've sung in concerts and forgot the words. I've sang in corpse. That happened in a dance show I was in when I was a kid. The one, the one performance that was the recorded performance they recorded on video for the parents when you were still allowed to do that. That was the time when, when I corpsed because people came on stage late and were laughing in my ear and I just couldn't, I just couldn't. Uh, still belted out that final note though, I got over it for the final note. <laughs> How old was I? Like seven or eight? I was a professional. But yeah, so like those hours have included me getting things wrong and doing a bad job and so I know, oh, you always get nervous before, before a performance, but I know whatever happens, I'm gonna be fine, I won't die, people won't judge me. And even if you do make like those little mistakes, like your placing of a note wasn't quite right, or you know, those little tiny mistakes, most people aren't gonna notice and know. I know how to fix problems if they arise, I know how to problem solve in the moment. Ukulele, I don't have that experience. So in a live performance, the idea of me getting stuff wrong is again, terrifying because I don't know I don't have enough experience to know that I could handle those moments and deal with them. Once you make a mistake, you can't go back and do it again. You have to fix it or carry on or whatever. So the chances of me making a mistake are more great. And 
I don't have the ability to deal with it. I went off on a massive tangent. <laughs> since starting ukulele last year, it's the first time I've ever, in a long time, since school, I've really seen myself as an instrumentalist. Not a proficient one, but an instrumentalist as well as a singer. I've always seen myself as a musician. I wasn't going to talk about this, but let's talk about this. The idea of singers not being musicians. I take issue with that. I think there are certain things that you need in order to class yourself as a musician. Like, for example, reading reading music. <laughs> but see, this is the thing. I know people who don't necessarily read music and, you know, there have been famous musicians that never learnt how to read music, but are musicians. So I guess it's not terms of that like knowing the knowing how to read music knowing all the classical words like knowing what diminuendo is and accelerando ritornello and blah 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 because also there are people who can read the dots like to anything but they don't have the skills like being able to learn things by ear being able to gauge harmony by ear work things out by ear i think oral skills are an essential part to being a musician. M music is an, is an oral art form. So to not have the oral skills is just as bad, in inverted commas, as not being able to read chord progressions, to not be able to, you know, read a C scale in treble clef or whatever. Don't even get me started on clef. So where does being able to read the notes end? Is it like, oh, well, you can read treble and bass clef, but you can't read alto clef? Now you can't read the dots. Do you see what I mean? It's where does that end? I do think in a way it's up to the individual singer so like I know there are singers not personally but I, I've seen singers describe themselves as vocalists and not describe themselves as musicians. I guess if you were going to be a musician there is a level of I guess there's just a, a level of knowledge and proficiency that is more than I'm just gonna sing the tune and sing the words like a level of wanting to make music that makes you a musician if that makes sense like singing a karaoke doesn't make you a musician but if you were singing a cover of something but you wanted to be creative with that and like test your vocal skill or and i guess i guess that's going more towards the realms of musicianship but i think it's fuzzy but it all this to say, it really annoys me when people just say flat out that singers are not musicians. There are some singers who aren't musicians, but singers are musicians just as much as oboists or clarinetists or saxophonists. Or, I don't know why I'm going with the woodwinds. <laughs> Could you tell I used to be a woodwind player? I was terrible at it. That's just a bugbear of mine. I mean, if you, if you disagree with me, feel free to say in the comments, I guess. But I... Why are there weird lines on my cheek? like I've like stuck my nails into myself. Going back to singer's block, because there's lots of different reasons people can have a break from singing, intentional or not. I've got mascara on my eyelid. Can I get it off? Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah, there's, there's lots of different reasons that people can end up having breaks. They can be physical, for example, if you get nodules or you know, there's something else, like something else physical that stops you from singing, like being sick can stop you from singing. But then also emotional things. I mean, that's why I hadn't sung since the 16th of October. I was really stressed and was like, you know what? Singing does not, is not what I want to be doing right now. Playing ukulele is really good for my mental health. This is why I deliberately started 100 days of practice to hold me accountable to make sure I did it. If I'm feeling down and sad, because singing makes me feel better as well, but it's so much easier for me to pick up my ukulele and play something than it is to be like, right, let's belt out something. And I think it's, it's like in physics, in nuclear fission, you have this thing called critical mass. Hi guys, so I got a little confused. Nuclear fission and critical mass density applies for what happens inside nuclear reactors. What I'm about to talk about is nuclear fusion, which happens inside stars. They're two different branches of nuclear physics. I got a little bit confused, but I still kind of like the analogy, so just go with it. I haven't studied physics since I was 16 years old, so please don't kill me. Thank you, bye. Where there has to be a certain mass of particles in one place for the gravity to cause them to fuse. That's why if you're looking at a star formation, you get, I think it's brown dwarfs, which are like where the star hasn't met the critical mass 
in order to fuse and emit energy and light and become a true star. If they don't really get there, it's like, oh, we tried, we'll be a brown dwarf. I think it's kind of a similar thing in terms of energy and motivation. Like singing, at least for me, requires a lot more physical and emotional energy than playing my ukulele does because A, it's a, a physical activity, you know, you're, you're using all of your muscles is also emotionally especially with musical theatre if you are actively acting you know you've got to be vulnerable and allow yourself to feel the feelings of the song and to be honest even if you're not planning on acting a lot of the time you can't help but be affected by the words you're singing so you've got to get over that especially if you're not in a great place of course you can help that by deciding what you sing like singing bare necessities if you're feeling a bit low that's probably not gonna exacerbate things you've got to get over that initial critical i don't know emotional and physical energy to be able to engage with it when you're going through stressful times of course it's going to be harder the more executive function an activity needs the harder it's going to be when times are tough again i can only speak for myself but singing is definitely something that requires more executive action doing my scales doing my exercises working on my belt working on my range singing things that aren't in the easiest part of my range for me. I have quite a wide range. I was wondering whether I wanted to wear red and then I just picked up the nude, so we're, we're going with that. This is gonna be a very boring look. <laughs> It'll be pretty. I'll take some selfies so it's a little bit worth it. I've been thinking about Fenty Beauty a lot recently since, you know, everything that's been happening supporting black owned businesses and things like that. I just don't really care about makeup, <laughs> she says, doing a get ready with me. But like, I, I don't. Makeup is one of those things I kind of, I need it because my job, you know, if you're doing a concert, you, you need to put makeup on. But like, I don't go out of my way to buy makeup or look at makeup or blah, 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 blah. There have been a couple of times when I've gone into boots by where I, where I work until I'm made redundant, which is probably very soon, in Piccadilly Circus and look at namely like the eyeshadow palettes and and the highlighters i like the idea of highlighter i just don't i just don't know how to do it because <laughs> i've never i've never had one the only thing is so i've been trying to figure out this is <laughs> we're completely off singing now guys <laughs> sorry i've been trying to figure out for a, quite a while what my what my undertone is because with MAC, I'm NC, which is cool toned. But with MAC, their NCs, which is neutral cool, are warmer to like counteract the coolness, which makes me think I must be cool toned, even though I'm using a foundation that gets rid of the cool tone by warming up my skin tone. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Basically, so in terms of highlighter, so there's the famous Rihanna highlighter that's called Trophy Wife, which is like gold. And it's like, but would that work on my skin? If I'm cool toned, if I've got a cool undertone, wouldn't that just look weird? I don't know. If you know about makeup and you want to help me out with this, feel free. Because I have no idea. When it comes to makeup, especially when I watch makeup content on YouTube, which I'm very picky about, it's like when you go to a museum or a zoo or an aquarium and you're like looking at all the things that you never see in everyday life and you're like, wow, what is this? Curiosities. That's what makeup is to me. It's, 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 an, it's a curiosity that I also have to use in my, in my work life. I literally know nothing about it. We got way off topic, but this is the completed look. I think, I think some things. <laughs> I, I guess with singing, not a lot of people talk about the difficulties of singing, I don't think, especially when on the internet, people tend to just post their best lives and their best selves and them belting out great things. I think it's very easy to think that because everyone's just showing the best, they're not having the struggles. So if you are someone who is finding it really difficult to sing right now, or you've gone through struggles with singing, you've gone through dry spells, you're going through kind of medical issues to do with your singing, you're not alone. Everyone has it at some point. The amount of times Adele's got nodules, we all go through it. We all struggle with these things. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it a bit before I went off off topic. It's part of life as an actor, as a singer, and it shouldn't be ignored and people shouldn't feel alone in it. So if you if that's where you're at at the moment, you can do this. You you can get through this. Be kind to yourself. This is what my face now looks like. I was thinking 
very dangerous thing to do, I know. I was thinking about linking to, if I can find it, the website Write to Your MP, which is basically a website where you put in your postcode, you make up the email that you want to send, and it will send it to your MP for you so you don't have to trawl through the internet trying to look for contact details for your representative in the UK, this is obviously. So yeah, I think I will link that below if you want to take some positive active action against all of the terribleness that is happening at the moment it will be there, please consider doing that, that would be great. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, it would really help me to grow my channel. Stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends!